everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel, Art Classes My Way. We are going to continue with this bear painting and the first little bit, I don't know how much because I haven't recorded or edited yet, uh, but the first little bit of this painting is going to be, uh, it's pretty much going to be silent with some ambient noise. Uh, I'm just going to finish up the fur and sh still show you guys in case pretty much I'm not going to be doing anything that I haven't told you to do already as far as the fur goes. I'm just going to continue to even up the light in this area where we have all these highlights over here. I just need to bring them over there just a little bit and I'm going to just go ahead and record that. I'm going to try to record uh, a lot of my paintings that I do. Let me know if you are in any way enjoying them. Otherwise, it's just more as proof that yes, I did paint these. Here are the videos of me painting these, what have you. And if you guys pick up anything along the way, I do hope you enjoy it. As long as I'm teaching you something, if even if that something is that nah, I don't like to paint this way, then thumbs up, yes, then you've learned something. You just learned how to do something in a way you don't want to do it. And that, that can actually be a very educational for you more than you would ever realize. So I'm going to continue on with this painting and then we are going to move on to starting the mouth. The mouth I'm hoping won't take insanely long but that is going to be the most detail oriented part of this whole painting. That is the focus, that is where I want the viewer's eye to start off with first before their eye travels around the rest of the picture. So that's going to might end up being on the next part of the video. All right, the next video, it might be a three-parter, but I'm gonna try to do my best to keep it short enough. And do let me know if you guys are enjoying this at all. The mouth is gonna be the next part, and then I'm thinking of just making a video just on doing the eyes. That's why I haven't done them yet. And the eyes are the most fun part for me. I always keep the funnest part for last because it keeps me motivated through the parts that I don't want to do this. And that happens quite quite frequently, actually. So I always avoid doing the parts that I find the most fun because then I, you know, it's like a little reward for, for doing the things that I don't particularly care to do as much. Like all that hair, which it isn't that bad. I prefer doing animals uh, more than anything. So the hair doesn't bother me whatsoever. And more of a case like landscapes, there will be things I love doing water effects so I'll do everything else first I'll save the water effects for last it keeps me motivated and keeps and obviously if you're wanting to do reflections you have to do everything first otherwise how are you going to know what to do with reflections so I'm going to go ahead and use my time machine put in some relaxing uh, birdie noises in there for you guys and I do hope you uh, can at least relax to that and also, I want to pose to you guys a question. Um, Halloween is coming up, and this is probably going to end up airing just after Halloween. Or by the time you guys can respond to me, it's going to be after Halloween. But I was thinking about some of my favorite artists as a kid that influenced me. One man in particular uh, who influenced me as a small child, and trust me, it's Halloween related. Um, he illustrated a bunch of books and they were kids books and it's called scary stories some of you may know about them it's a series of three books kids loved them when they came out and during my age and the uh, illustrator for them and I was thinking maybe doing uh, a, maybe some videos on some of my favorite artists and talking about their artwork their techniques their styles and little short videos because obviously there's no way I can get a hold of some of these amazing people especially the dead ones I, I really don't need a Ouija board in my house so let me know what you guys think about that or maybe even some of your favorite artists uh, that influenced you as a kid or what have you so I'm gonna shut up and I'm gonna get to painting and please do enjoy Oh, yeah, and uh, real quick, in addition to white for the highlighted areas, I will also be using uh, just a touch of yellow ochre. Uh, we're back to the raw sienna. I don't really need the burnt umber so much because I'm not working in my darker areas. So, yeah.
gotten to the point now where I'm just going to add in darker darks. So pretty much what I'm going to be playing with is the burnt umber haha, and the prior's gray, which is what I've been using for the blacks and everything. And predominantly I'm wanting to just be using it in this bottom area. I'm pretty happy with everything else. I added a lot of white, just a touch. I probably had way too much yellow ochre out of my tube. So I didn't end up using that much. It ended up not quite looking how I hoped. So I just blended in a few pieces here and there. You got a couple streaks around in here. But overall, I'm quite happy with how this is turning out. Obviously, the nose needs a lot more work, all the black in it and the lip itself. I'm not going to be worrying about that, just the hair. And like I said, it's Pryor's Gray with the Burnt Umber mixing the two to try to get a few more black blacks in just a few areas down along the bottom here to make it feel like everything's really receding back. Now, if you're afraid that this lip is going to end up getting uh, hidden in all that black, you would be correct, but I haven't even added highlights to that area down there. So no worries, uh, we're, we're thinking here. So I'm going to just go ahead and do that and put you guys back into silent mode. See ya. We are now to the point where we are actually gonna start working on the mouth and the nose now and pretty much we got a variety of choices and I can actually show you guys what I meant in our last or in my last video about just using black and white to make a color or make the colors lighter or darker themselves and and well if you get it too dark you add a little bit of white and now it's too light you keep adding back and forth to try to get a range of colors and what ends up happening now what you're going to end up seeing is intentional uh, what I'm going to want to have happen to it but I won't be using black we will be using Pryor's Gray, which has pretty much been our black for a humongous portion of this painting. We are going to be using white. And I have a variety of reds to use. Now, I'm not 100% sure which red it is I'm going to be using. Depends on the shades of pink I end up getting. We have here, Zurian. I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it. Uh, Cadmium Red. Uh, this guy is the light hue version of it and uh, we have Grumbacher Red. Uh, they have a specific patent on this. This is Grumbacher Red. It's really close but won't be 100% exact to like Coca-Cola Red. Coca-Cola has a very specific patent on that specific shade of red just as Grumbacher will have a very specific patent on this shade of red plus the other two reds that they have. No, no company makes the exact same shade of red. They all have their own patents over the specific shades they have. Um, then we have now there's an accent over the eye, which makes me unable to figure out how to pronounce it. I did not take French, um, or if that's even Spanish, I'm not really sure. I did take a little Spanish. Again, dyslexia, you, you don't really care for how things are spelled, you just care for how things are said. Uh, or at least with my form of dyslexia. So we have Carmias Acrea. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to assume that that's the name of it, because I can't see it anywhere else on the thingy. So. Honestly, I want to start off with this one uh, from the color on the outside of it. Actually, it looks like my bedroom, the color I painted my bedroom. I'm going to guess that what I'm going to end up wanting here is someplace between this guy and Grumbacher Red. I have a feeling um, Alizurian. <laughs> I don't know. I have a feeling this guy is going to be too much on the purpler side of red, um, especially if you hold a different red up to it, well, how how would you get closer to making this red? Probably adding blue to red and getting something a little more on the purple side, even though it's not really purple. I don't think this is going to be our man, and as you can see, once again, Grumbacher, go back to the way you used to make your caps, because this is BS. All right, let's see here. I'm going to make little dollops of each one of these reds, and for this part of it, trying to figure out which one to use, Mixing white, and I'm sorry you can't see this on the uh, the camera there, but uh, mixing white with these reds is going to be the more important part. The gray will come later. Uh, the white is uh, pretty much going to get us our the exact color we want, and the color is going to be a pinkish color. If not pink, then a very super, super pale pink. Um, because a lot of the photos that I've seen that I'm using my reference photos on, uh, if you guys have ever seen a chow mix dog, they call them chow mixes, but I've seen purebred Labradors. Uh, my dad had a black lab and she had a 
black spot on the inside of her mouth, and for some reason uh, that was my reasoning for calling her freckles. But even purebred dogs can have those black spots on the inside of their mouths. And from a lot of the dentistry photos that I've seen of grizzly bears, uh, from like when they've been in zoos and they do dentist work and things like that with their mouths wide open, and even wild photos of grizzly bears fighting with each other, they're very, very pale gums, it seems like, uh, kind of bloodless almost in a way, or like they're so scared to death that all the blood is drained from their, their face. And that's kind of the pink color that we're going to be dealing with, along with a Pryor's gray mixed with white for those different spots on the inside of their mouth that you see probably more commonly for most people would be in the mouth of a dog. So grab my white. All right, now it's going to be pretty hard for you guys at home to judge because the lighting's different from what I'm using, what the camera records, and so on and so on and so on. Um, it's not going to be true to life as what I see it versus what you're going to be seeing it through the camera. But we do have, uh, this guy here was pretty much that Liquitex, I couldn't pronounce it with the over the eye. Uh, this guy's a little bit kind of purpley. He kind of almost makes a bit of a, a very bright pink. It's not quite a uh, hot pink, but it comes really closer to a hot pink or something with a touch of purple already in it. So it won't be in our running. Uh, we had the light cadmium, which made, um, actually I ended up mixing it. It ended up getting really, really close. And then we had the Grumbacher red, uh, which made these two. I, this was the cadmium, but that was, um, I ended up mixing it and getting it mixed up. But anyway, so the Grumbacher red and the light cadmium actually are pretty much what I want. Now remember a little tiny bit of red or a little bit, tiny bit of any color m can make a humongous difference in white. So that's why I have a great big white glob here and pretty much going to need it for doing all that. I'm not going to worry about the teeth. I'm going to worry about getting the pinks of the mouth correct. And pretty much between these three reds, they're not so far off that really I couldn't use all three of them. Predominantly it's going to be Grumbacher red for the majority of the mouth, 99% of the mouth, just like how the burnt sienna was our background color. Well, that's going to pretty much be the Grumbacher red and white mixed together. And these two guys are going to kind of be accents uh, throughout that pink, because even though it's all, well, not all going to be, but since even though it's predominantly going to be one color, you really got to look and see what it, what it is that you're painting, because nothing is just one color. Uh, depending on the way the light hits it, depending on the little divots in, let's try to say, for instance, fabric or fur can make subtle differences and changes that will define the shape of whatever it is that you're painting. Uh, for instance, even a t-shirt, just because it's a white t-shirt does not mean that it's going to be this solid blob of white on your canvas or whatever it is that you're doing. Even in a pencil drawing, there's still going to be subtle little ripples uh, or lump or fold that is going to define how that shirt is shaped and if it's a small person underneath the shirt wearing it or if it's a large person and it's a tight t-shirt uh, all those things really do factor in so always keep in mind nothing is just one solid color this bear is not one solid color he's comprised of about six different browns at this point and i do include the browns mixed with the grum or the uh, priors gray and the browns mixed with white because those are their, I mean, that's more tones and values, but still, it's color. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to blow up some of my pictures. Right. And first thing I'm going to do, now it's not going to be this bright of a pink color, but I'm going to start trying to define how this lip interacts with the inside of the mouth here. And his teeth, there's tooth line there, there we go. Now I am fine with letting some of this background come through. That is allowing, one, it does change the overall color that you do end up seeing in the picture, but it also adds, again, dimension as if I'm adding darks and lights to this piece without actually, it's just the paint getting thinner and showing the previous layer. We got the skin of the lip going like that.
Now I'm going to go ahead and let that dry. Uh, if you've ever noticed with acrylics, sometimes the paint will just lift. It's like kind of, all you ladies out there will understand this. Whenever you paint your fingernails, you think they're dry, and then you try to go over it with a second coat, and then all of a sudden that next, that previous coat that you put down comes off or just doesn't stay nice and hard like it should. That's because the paint wasn't actually completely dry in that first layer, and what you've done is rehydrated it with the new layer, which pretty much you might as well have just put on an extra thick coat of paint. Well, in this case, because I am using just a little bit of water in with this to get some of this transparency going on, uh, I'm by adding more and more paint to it, I'm just rehydrating what was previously already there. So I need like about five minutes to dry. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to other places. Uh, you can see where I've left paint a little thicker in areas and I want to make them a little stronger. And yet I'm leaving some of this background color and I'll still go in with Pryor's Gray and highlight some areas. But overall, by letting the background come through, it allows to add for shading. And these are the areas, because the light's coming from this direction, these are the areas that I'm wanting to be a little bit more on the shaded side, the darker area. This is a little bit bright, so I'll have to go in and fix it. But overall, I'm just putting down the what's going to define the overall uh, shape of what I'm doing. I'm going around. Yeah, there we go, that's better. I'm going around this way to give the feeling of the roundedness, but at the same time, the gums also kind of round themselves like this so that'll probably be the next layer but you don't want to get rid of this roundedness because where the teeth are that you know it's that way but at the same time it's also this way so the fun of trying to make everything feel dimensional so now i'm going to go down to the bottom around the teeth Now, I've gone ahead and got myself some Pryor's Gray, and I'm going to go in, in here and start getting some of the dark areas. I like to think that I'm fairly good at doing hair to the point where I know how to do all the highlights and whatnot. Mouths are not something I do on a regular basis, especially for one like this. So, for myself, I typically find when I'm having a hard time just trying to get the highlights of an area and it's not defining itself very well versus my darker darks, I just go ahead and go in with my darkest dark, a very, very light amount of it, and start mixing it in with the wet paints that are already on my canvas.
quickly I'm going to show you guys a little technique to take into account uh, keep in mind whenever you're doing painting I have told you about scumbling which you can I'll do a close-up after I get done uh, explaining the next technique but I got a lot of scumbling going on in these areas and scumbling basically you're putting paint where the paint on, is pretty much on the top a... layer but all the paint that I've pushed down into the little grooves of the canvas that's still there and that's actually still visible through quite a bit of it and that technique is called scumbling and if you have very little paint on your paintbrush and you use it sorry getting some water for my paint before it dries out by having a very minuscule amount of paint on your paintbrush not using so much the tip of the bristles but more the side of the paintbrush you tend to be able to put layers of paint a little bit more on the top instead of pushing it down into the grooves themselves this allows you to have a very layered effect now for this little technique this is called a glaze now you can mix all kinds of medium together with your water or not your water with your paint to basically thin it down make it kind of a watercolor-esque is what I want to go for there and I've already done that you can see here now you can use water but again you don't want to go you don't want to thin the paint down to 20% or less 21% fine if you are that good at calculating how much water to paint ratio then good on you not everybody can you also have the option of linseed oil linseed oil will mix with acrylics and that's one of the wonderful things about acrylics is that it can either work with water which is more of a watercolor thing and you can get very watercolor effects with it or you can go the opposite direction and start adding oil to it and make it a lot more like oil paints now the only problem is with using your linseed oils and your more oil based uh, thinning mediums out there is that it'll take a whole lot longer to dry and there there are even more out there than that there are translucent mixing mediums that I've never really messed with I either use water or I use linseed oil now once the if you use a water glaze once you've done that and it's completely dry I mean like you it's it's been sitting for a day it's done when it is completely dry you could go over the top of it with like linseed oil uh, paints or thin down acrylic with linseed oil and then it'll work together but you can't mix what essentially would be wet into wet when you have those two different mediums obviously oil and water but I have thinned down this blue I've decided that I kind of like the way it looked before I got a little too hyper with brightening all this up and down here so I'm just gonna bring it back just a tiny bit but I still like how I got all this volume I have going on and I want to add like a sense of shadow and shading a little bit more than what I have and if I went in there with like this it'll come off too strong and I do again want to kind of tone down some areas so that's a great reason to use a glaze so let's come in here and I want to kind of try to think of it how how I would with yeah I need a little bit more paint in there I'm gonna to try to think of it a little bit more how you know just what's going to block the light and following the shapes that I've already built up myself here that's a little too much but Now this allows your paint to still go down inside of the grooves and inside of the textures of what you currently have laid down, but it still gives and you that translucent look toned back so that way you can just kind of darken up what's there paint. without losing. Mix it in with some of the water there. glaze that I've already got. That looks on. a little bit better. I'll give that a few moments. Because even though this lip is up, and yes, I think I got a little too hot. It's, it's also out. So you should actually end up blocking now that ended up turning into a scumble there so I'm going to mix a little bit more of my watery stuff in yeah. more than that there we go 
paint, paint brush. Now you want to make sure that your paint brush doesn't have hardly any water in it when you do this because otherwise you're just going to add more water in and it's just going to end up spreading everything. So just kind of come in here. It's nice and clean and just barely damp. Just kind of smooth out some of that. Just Place. And I hope that'll help you guys out with some things and even show you when and where you want to use something like that. Or should just leave it alone because the wet is picking up what's starting to dry. And uh, again, I've explained that already, so I won't rehash it for you. And I'm going to go ahead and take care of them down here. And again, it's just picking up some water on your paintbrush, mixing it in, not to get too, too wet with it. Now, I feel I've made this way too extreme, so what I'm going to do is take kind of my mid-tone gray here, and by taking it over the top as a scumble will help me to lighten this up, but still keep all the details that I worked so hard to put in there. And then it won't feel like such a deep crevice, and already that's working out just fine. Super easy little fix. And now by using my bristles, I can work it in just a little bit. And there we go. Maybe over here as well. So there you have it. Uh, glaze, scumbles. They are awesome little tools uh, to put in, definitely in your arsenal whenever you're painting. So that's pretty much that and I'm going to go ahead and continue working on the tongue, getting it more detailed, making sure that I fill in all this darkest dark area. I'm pretty happy with from here up, it really feels like you're going down in, but it this all about from here down all feels like the same area and that's because I put light scumbles throughout and I didn't end up covering them up with any of my priors gray so just to go ahead and cover those up and then I can make this tongue feel more like it's emerging out of this inky blackness a little more. And we'll see what that feels like once it is all good and dry. Maybe just back, back, back I say back. And 
here again, I'm just using Scumbling again. To leave the details underneath, but still add that darkness to the top to make everything recede backwards. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue on painting. Pardon while I'm actually holding my camera here. Uh, I couldn't get anything close enough to show you what a scumble is. So as you can see, this pink is actually underneath this layer that I put down of this darker dark. This was scumbled over the top and right there is a little area that you can see. Uh, this whole area here and especially this white over the top of the pink, this pretty much this whole area here. So there is a example of scumbling for you. Well, lots of the examples of scumbling. And we can see the difference between scumbling up close and our glaze that we put down. It's a lot smoother overall and it just deepens everything that's underneath. At least in this case, the way I used it. You can also do the inverse of it and lightly go over the top of something to give the highlights. So there uh, is. All right, so we're gonna work on the nose a little bit. I've kind of redefined how I want the nose to be and looking at uh, eight other bears who are kind of making this and how, what position their nose would actually be in. And unlike dogs where when they make the snarly face, their nose doesn't really change that much because of the expressiveness of a bear's lips, their nose practically rolls backwards. So I'm probably gonna need to take off just a little bit of that change how my white lines are and even though their noses are black, on the inside, their noses do tend to be pink, uh, like regular skin. So I'm going to, where I had this brown in the back, instead I'm going to change it up here a little bit. And I'm going to make it a little bit more skin color, although I don't want it that bright. I want it to be kind of like the inside of the mouth here. Where you see me putting a lot more red, straight red into this, um, not trying to get the idea of bloodiness or bloody teeth or anything like that. I'm just trying to get some 
keeping this bear from seeming like it's a cold dead fish. It's, it's there, a lot of them, a lot of them do this. A lot of them from the photos are this way. It's just so pale and like, like they have no circulation. And uh, so it's going to be something that I'm probably going to be fiddle farting around with a little bit more. Kind of get that right balance of what I'm seeing from realistic photos versus what I want more out of it. So that, that's just, you know, trying to strike the right balance. So I'm going in here with pretty much a pinkish gray color. So I'm going to leave a little bit of black uh, just so that way I don't lose my spot because this color is very similar to that up there. And I think I'm going to try to mix just some straight red and Pryor's gray into that. Give it more of the illusion of skin, the light coming through skin and blood cells and take some of that and put it in with what I already got here that's way too much but I gotta mix it because a lot of this has got to be black and this is like way down deep inside of the nostril so I'll give that a chance to dry first while we are waiting on this guy to dry up here. Let's go ahead and work on the teeth. The most fun, well not the most fun, the most fun is the eyes. Second most fun will be the teeth. Now I have titanium white here and I have just a little bit, just the tiniest amount of yellow ochre. And when I mix the two, you won't, you're not gonna need a whole bunch. They're obviously a wild grizzly bear isn't gonna have brilliant, beautiful, gorgeous teeth. There are, unless you are a grizzly bear in the zoo, you don't have a dental hygienist. But we want something that's a little bit of off-white. And let's go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, everybody's got six. Now these guys on the outermost side are almost pointed. They want a little more white than that. Very close together. Now because bears are, while they're carnivores, they're, they are omnivorous. A large part of their diet does consist of berries and, and such. The front teeth are a lot more on the flat side. And this is why I would recommend to save the teeth for last. Um, so that way any little wonky areas that you would be putting them in at, again, I wanted to make sure, like especially with this thing, this thing's actually a lot larger, just like this guy, side over here. Uh, it just got painted over. It's actually gonna come way out here and kind of go over this lip, which is kind of why this looks a little funny because I do have the intention of putting this tooth over the lip, but I want to make sure that the background, if I don't go all the way, the background is where it's supposed to be behind the tooth and that's why a lot of oil painters and acrylic painters they have a pretty good advantage if they do the background then they don't have to worry about oh well i didn't get the background close enough to this side now we're not going to over generalize their teeth obviously they don't have perfect points for their teeth they are slightly rounded on the bottom and again, it's much better to slowly block it in than try to paint it all in all at once and then have made a mistake. These teeth are supposed to be at an angle, but this too still needs to go down here. An angle with the lips. 
to make sure all my angles are right. Now my angles will change because this is the horizon line. This, eh, can't work. this here is pretty much the horizon line. This is where you know basically everything goes from being like this to being like this. So make sure my So at this point, I've got all my collars laid down. I got my teeth pretty much blocked in how I want them. So again, using white, uh, yellow, uh, yellow ochre, and I'm going to also be using some more Pryor's gray. This is probably way too much for this part, but there's other areas I can use it in. And I'm going to put in the details in the teeth. Now the yellow ochre is going to be for the first step. That's going to represent my dark darks, except for in a few places. I like how that's already that way. But it's going to be basically representing my shadowing. And then after that, then once it's dry, I will scumble over with the Pryor's Gray to get a darker dark and get more of a sense of shading. If I don't like how the scumble goes, then I'll probably go with a glaze instead. Which actually, standing here and thinking about it, it'll probably just, I'll go glaze first. It seems like that'll be the more appropriate technique to me. And maybe I'll even glaze a little bit over the top of that to make it look a little more uniform. We'll see how it goes. So that's pretty much what I'm, all I'm going to be doing for this step.
Now we've come to the end of this little segment. Uh, so the mouth is pretty much, I'm pretty satisfied with it. I might tweak the nose a little bit more, but overall uh, that whole area is pretty much done. So then our last video, and it's going to be a fairly short one, uh, and you guys can let me know if you also want me to show putting in all just the teeniest, tiniest details into the painting afterwards, and it's pretty much it's the exact same techniques I've been showing you, but with a tiny brush and using implied, uh, implied detail, just doing details in certain areas like I've done with this area here for the hair and everything else is rather kind of blurry again to control the viewers eye going around the piece the mouth is the most detailed bringing the viewer up and then the eyes are going to be super detailed I want people to notice the eyes and then the rest of this piece all the details travel around come down through here where there's less detail and then come back up and it's kind of a continuous loop and as far as putting those details in, it's just using a smaller paintbrush. So we will be doing eyes for the last one. And I will probably just show you, walk you through one eye. And then fast forward through the second one to show you the whole ending piece. Thanks for coming and hanging out, guys. And just to let you know, I am um, trying to become a part of this little adventure here. Hold this up correctly. Yay! Uh, Indianapolis presents Holiday Raw 2017. I need to sell 20 tickets in order to be able to participate in this event. They specifically want me to bring my jewelry work. But you guys can come over, hang out with me, talk with me about whatever you want. And I do know quite a lot of you are not in the United States. And those of you that are, probably aren't in Indiana. But if you happen to be from the area... You know, come over, hang out. Uh, you have to go to this website to order the tickets. And this is the only way that it counts towards me being able to go. Uh, is if you buy them through here. Otherwise, they have no way of knowing. Uh, and yeah, if you guys are also artists, this might be something that you can do as well. Because the RAW event is kind of a worldwide thing. Uh, and I'm sure you can go to their website and check out local areas and then maybe you guys can come and at least talk to some people who run the event to find out if this is something for you or not. And going on their website will show you where they have all their shows and stuff. So yeah, um, if you guys want to participate, come hang out, talk with me. I'm sure I'm going to be pretty bored just sitting around waiting for people to come and talk to me. So why not well just come over and talk. Uh, so yeah, that would be great. The tickets are $22 a piece and full disclosure if I do end up selling more than 20 tickets I get like five or ten dollars for each person after that Might be I'm gonna be lucky to that I'm hit pretty much tickets. just about I already know that all for sure. 13 uh, hours. So yeah, uh, please uh, come and so it's hang out if you want not to. Not exactly the quickest painting wise, but again it also I will see you in the next one which is going to be specifically I hope you guys eyes have a great deal and of fun coming up this holiday season. 